Hi, Ben here from Trident Fly Fishing. I've got with me today the all new Hardy Zane Pro, which replaces the very popular Zephyrus Saltwater in the Hardy lineup. Now, what Hardy has done for 2020 is replaced virtually every single rod in their lineup. And that is not just Hardy, but also the other brands in the portfolio, Fenwick, and they've also reintroduced Greys. And we're gonna be reviewing them all for you right now. Before we get to those other rods, we're gonna start with this nine foot eight weight Zane Pro, which is gonna be the high end saltwater rod in the Hardy lineup. And before we cast it, we're gonna walk you through some of the components on this rod. Starting at the bottom, this is gonna be pretty standard Hardy construction. We've got a double up locking aluminum reel seat, nice fighting butt, full wells grip, nothing new here. We've seen this for years and years. And that moves on to this nice blue blank, I think it's a, definitely an attractive blank and it looks a lot like the Zephyrus. So if you like the look and feel of that Zephyrus, this is not gonna be anything new for you. Of course, Hardy includes some alignment dots, which we really like. And what they have changed for this year are the guides. And a, Hardy has always been a proponent of using high quality components. And they've done just that in this rod. We've got Seracoil stripping guides and titanium snake guides. Really super lightweight, super high performance. It's just what you're gonna want for that next bone fishing trip. Tell us what you think about the looks of this new rod by leaving a comment in the box below. And don't forget to subscribe to get all those great new hardy rod reviews. And now we're gonna get it out in the field and show you how it casts. Starting at our first saltwater distance of 40 feet, you just see how high performing this rod really is. It's insanely accurate at that shorter distance. It's gonna be the absolute perfect flats weighting bonefish rod. It's just highly accurate, provides a nice delicate presentation, and it's just really user friendly. I really enjoyed it. As we moved back, 60 feet also was great. I found that it is definitely a little bit of a softer rod though. So it's a rod that you're gonna wanna slow that casting stroke down a little bit and let the rod do the work. But when you do, it provides plenty of power. This is not really a departure from what Hardy did previously, but just sort of a continuation of that theme. Really fantastic accuracy, again, at that middle distance. As we move back to 80 feet, you know, that's a distance that's not gonna be hugely useful as you're fishing. And this rod doesn't do quite as well as some of the faster rods. It's definitely gonna run out of power towards the end of that, but it can absolutely get it done, but probably wouldn't be my first choice taking it 80 feet into a 20 mile an hour headwind either. We really enjoyed the Hardy lineup for years and years. I'm really happy to say that this Zane Pro is just as good as the Pro Axis, the Pro Axis X, and the Zephyrus before it. It's just a phenomenal saltwater rod, and it's particularly well suited for anybody making those shorter casts. And it's so user friendly that if you're a beginner or it's your first time in the salt, you'll have no trouble adapting to this rod. And at the $850 price point, sure, it's premium, but maybe not quite as expensive as some of the super high-end rods that are on the market today. Hi guys, I wanted to pop in and let you know that these videos are fully funded by your purchases at our shop. If you find this video helpful and you want to keep them coming, consider making your next gear purchase at tridentflyfishing.com. Now for our Poseidon score. Starting with accuracy, I'd say this is super accurate in close, but not quite as accurate far out. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. In terms of components, this rod here is just about as good as it gets. It's maybe a half step down from rods like the Scott Sector. They have just a little bit better reel seat, a little bit better cork. I'm gonna say it's a nine and a half out of 10. Up next is distance. And this is not gonna be the number one distance rod out there. It's more for those close in shots. Like we've already mentioned, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. In terms of the grip, it's a standard full well saltwater grip, super comfortable in my hands. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. In terms of looks, 
the rod is a nice looking rod, but definitely has that overseas built quality to it, which is not quite as nice as, you know, your Scots and your Winstons. And I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. For swing weight, this comes in at 86 gram meters squared, which is a light rod for sure, but not quite as light as super, super light eight weights on the market that are below that 80 gram meter square mark. And I'd say this earns a seven and a half out of 10 for swing weight. In terms of value, at $850, this is an expensive rod. It does have top-notch components, and it's a really, really nice casting rod. But you're also talking about a very competitive segment. And, and it's really only about 100 bucks less than some of the US-made rods in this same performance category. I'm gonna say that earns it a seven and a half out of 10 in terms of value. Last but not least is the cool factor. And while Hardy has replaced their entire lineup and there's gonna be some big, big marketing pushes into this rod, I'm just not sure that a saltwater rod in 2020 is gonna be all that hot when you can't really go anywhere. I'm gonna say it's a seven and a half out of 10 for the cool factor. And that leaves us with a total Poseidon score of 65, which puts it below rods like the Scott Sector, but above the Sage Maverick. And overall, that feels about right. It's a really, really good rod that lost some points for value and cool factor. The bottom line is, this is a fantastic offering from Hardy, and it's really as good as you'll find anywhere. I'm Ben. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.